the college football experience, Boise State Broncos 2023 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network brought to you by Edge Boost. Yes, Edge Boost enables you to double your bet with no interest. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to get started today. We're also brought to you by Bird Dog Shorts. Yes, the world's greatest shorts are hooking you up with a free Yeti style tumbler. When you order over at birddogs.com slash pool. Once again, that is birddogs.com slash pool. So check that out. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, what's up, you degenerate gamblers? This is Bill Burr, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. Experience Boise State Broncos 2023 team preview. I mean, I'm always excited to talk Boise State. You know, it's a shame we don't have the 12 team playoff even this year, but for a lot of those years, man, I could talk a lot that they, Boise State would essentially be what Gonzaga is in college basketball. We'll talk more about that in a second. But if you're wondering just who the hell you're listening to, well, my name is Colby Swing and Database Dan, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. Uh, would have killed a normal man, but uh, no, that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was, was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. Uh, and you're nothing but a chameleon, lemon-headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Good night. I am probably drinking too much, right? True. That's what I do. And hopefully you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Look, I have a Boise state like windbreaker. I don't know where it is. I'm going to, I'm going to just say my wife put it somewhere. So I, I went deep to a t-shirt I bought in a parking lot while I was really drunk when Boise state was playing Virginia tech at FedEx field back in 2010. Yes. It's also like 30 sizes too big for me. Like I said, I was very intoxicated when I purchased it, but I still have it. All right. And I'm supporting the Broncos. I am joined by my co-host, this guy. Uh, look, I, 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 I love having this guy on the show. Cause he's just a bundle of football knowledge. And uh, look, I think you're going to hear a lot more of him in the coming weeks, months, years, perhaps uh, they call him uh, the Gulf coast guru. I call him Mike Rose. Yes. How you doing Mike? And appreciate you hopping on to talk a little Boise state football. Yeah, man. I love your style. I, there's a, in the one touristy area I live by, they have this store where you go in and everything in there is like t-shirts and they're all five bucks. There's Lipscomb, there's Furman, there's all these like random teams and I just <laughs> eat it up. I can't wait to buy it and I'll do the same thing you'll do. I'll buy like a triple X <laughs> like, I don't care. Like, whatever. I'll wear it to bed or something. Like, I'm a girl. Get, like, like oversized shirts and sleep in them. But, uh, no, I'm stoked to be here, dude. Boise, if you asked me if I wanted to be on Boise State or if I wanted to be on Alabama, I'd pick Boise State. I'm all about this. I love the G5 action. This team epitomizes everything you want from a G5 program. Oh, so let's I do it. I agree. Look, I consider them eight time national champions. You can go back to the forties and fifties where they had undefeated seasons. And then they had the same record or better uh, in, in years, 2003, six, eight, nine, 10, 11. So, and, and when you really factor in that run, it that's the, I think that run showed the flaw in college football. Now uh, I use that uh, comparison a lot off air that Look at college basketball, what Gonzaga has done. Gonzaga has owned the WCC and now they've turned into a blue blood. They've gotten to the national championship game twice. They still haven't won it, but still 
they have been allowed now they recruit nationally with the best of, of Kentucky Duke, uh, everybody, right? They're allowed into the party. College football always had this ceiling where Boise had unbelievable runs. I mean, on un- unbelievable runs, they haven't had a losing season since 1996, what six, I think it is, uh, or 97, one of the two. And when you consider that, and when you consider who they've beaten along the way, I got it all here for you, by the way, because they jumped to FBS in 97 folks. That's another thing you might think, Oh no, they had losing seasons back in the early nineties. Well, they were, yeah. I mean, they, they might've had some, but they were in the FCS then um, they have beaten Utah four times, Louisville, Iowa state, BYU seven times, TCU three times, uh, Oregon state four times, Oklahoma. Uh, that's the Fiesta bowl game. We all remember where they had an undefeated season, the Oregon ducks, three times, Virginia tech, Georgia, Arizona state, Washington, multiple times, uh, Arizona, Virginia, Washington state, Florida state. I mean, look, that's how many of those have played for a national championship or had undefeated seasons in the, in the last, uh, you know, 24 years of college well, since they've been in the FBS, what Virginia tech played Florida state in the national championship when they had Mike Vick, uh, Florida state has obviously been in the national championship and won it in 14 and, and, and also in 99, uh, <laughs> Washington has been to the CFP. Oregon has been to the national championship. What twice and lost uh, Oklahoma, obviously won a national championship 2000. They've also been there. Uh, what two thousand? One of the mid 2000 years, Georgia obviously is Georgia. Uh, Utah has had undefeated seasons where they should have been a national champion and BYU obviously won a national championship in 1984. And I would argue that in 96, they should be tied with the Florida Gators, but e- either way, uh, those are big name brands and Boise States and, and Bo- none of them played on the Smurf turf with the exception of TCU and Utah when they were in the mountain West and B- and, and BYU, those three, the rest of them didn't really play on the Smurf turf. I think Oregon did once when, uh, when LeGarrette bunt or blunt punched their uh, defensive, uh, end in the face. That was fantastic. But um, the rest of them don't really play on the Smurf turf. So like Florida state hasn't played on the Smurf turf. Georgia didn't play them on the Smurf turf. Virginia tech didn't play them on the Smurf turf. And if we're going to talk Smurf turf, one of the most ridiculous stats, I think in college football right now, since the year 1999, um, the Boise state Broncos are 122 and seven on the Smurf turf. Holy shit. That is unbelievable. They had a 65 game win streak go on for a decade. I mean, <laughs> dude, look, I even didn't think that stat was real. I was doing my prep for this show and I pulled it up and I was like, no fucking way. I mean, I've been to the Smurf turf. It's a great home environment, but 122 and seven, Mike, those, that's those insane. Are video, those yeah. are video game numbers, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely insane. And uh, I also know that like, it's hard for them to schedule. They became so good. If you go back to when they first came in the FBS, South Carolina was scheduling them. Georgia was scheduling them. Ole Miss was scheduling them. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the, the big name brands of college football were, were scheduling them. Well, they got so good and started beating those teams that they're like, Hey, you know what? Let's not schedule these guys, which is part of my problem with the system. I know we're, we're supposed to talk Boise state, not the, the landscape of college football here, but part of the problem with the system is there is a ceiling and hopefully next year when that 12 team playoff goes, I still want auto bids down the road of, from all 10 conferences. I think that's only fair. And I think that will, that will let them recruit nationally because they've been so good over the years. But I mean, it's hard for them to schedule teams. It's hard for them to schedule teams home and home, especially in the power five take this year, you know, they get Washington. They, the PAC 12 seems to be, I'd say the conference most friendly with scheduling them, but uh, they also get UCF, but that's only because it's the back end of a deal when they were in the AAC. Now that they're in the big 12, I bet you UCF would probably not schedule Boise, but uh, what do you, what do you make of all that? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it kind of, they kind of became like notorious for it. They would just go, like you said, they go into everybody else's stadiums. They beat them straight up and it's, it's amazing. I mean, 
why why would you schedule them at this point you know other than to just prove a point like hey i'm alabama i'm not afraid but alabama doesn't do it there's no point there's no yeah. incentive for these power five teams to schedule them so they duck and they dodge them and they don't want to fight them they don't want to give them the shot so boise got to do their best and find whoever and it's the pac-12 but Look! Look what happens to the Pac-12 when they play these Fresno. They, they lose. These, they, <laughs> they lose. lose. Yeah. And, it, and it just destroys them as a conference. So yeah, I yeah. get why they do it, but it's the system that's broken. Like you always say, man, I'm not going to rein you in on this kind of talk like Patty C does. We can go on about it for hours. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not TMZ. I'm on your side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I, I think the Gonzaga parallel is perfect. They're both right there. They mm-hmm. both, like, Gonzaga had, like, great winning seasons as a mid major in the nineties. And they carried that over to the two thousands. And then they were able to, the, the, they were able to basically crack the code and get into the mix of college basketball elite teams, where I think now everyone would, would define them as pretty much like amongst the blue bloods, or they at least recruit nationally amongst the blue bloods. Boise still kind of struggles to do that because the ceiling and I hate, you know, the power five people that say, well, they could schedule better. Not if no one wants to play them, <laughs> you exactly. know what I mean? Like the, the dilemma is there where they've proven that they're so good over the years. Like I said, I haven't had a losing record since, you know, they've had a more winning. Like I, I would be curious. I know it's a crazy era of college football where, you know, Stetson Bennett was like 75 years old and just won the national championship. But I would be curious to know if anyone on the roster was alive the last time they had a, a losing season. Cause they'd have to be 26 years old. Um, so shout out to Boise in this program. We're going to talk all about it. But uh, before I do that, I want to tell you folks out there that the Boise state Broncos, 2023 season preview episodes brought to you by edge boost. Yes. Edge boost is the world's bet. Uh, first bet. Now pay later visa card. Yes. Our edge currently offers up to $2,500 in betting advances, which can be an unbelievable, extremely valuable tool. Uh, imagine what you can do with an, with an increased bankroll. Say you lost a few bets and you're just like, man, I would love to keep betting. Cause I know I was on the right side of these. Well, you know, now you don't have to sit there and call, call your brother and say, Hey, can you Venmo me $200? You know, I'm in a bit of a jam here. No, you just got this beautiful thing called edge boost. All right. You can get down on some of your favorite futures without tying up your bankroll for months. Your girlfriend or your wife's not going to be asking, what is this transaction? I thought you only took $200 to gamble a month. Uh, Look, double down on maybe a favorite bet you like, or, uh, you know, create an awesome middle or or hedge. That's disgusting. But um, look, edge boost. Here's what's great about it. They're not some sleazy loan shark where, you know, if you don't have the money, not only do you get like uh, a Louisville slugger to your noggin, you you know, at your, you, you, you go deeper into the debt. That's not going to happen with edge boost because they charge 0% interest. I repeat 0% 0% interest. That's why gambling is so much safer today. All right. So I, I mean, I find that amazing. I don't know of any other places that just offer you 0% interest. Like, but yeah, here's a loan pay you back. Boom. What a fucking deal. Uh, edge boost really can, can be a part of a responsible gambling plan and they can set you up with daily, weekly, monthly limits across all your betting accounts in one place. So support SGPN and grow your bankroll by going to sports gambling podcast.com slash edge to sign up that sports gambling podcast.com slash edge. You must be 21 years older to use probably gambling call 100 gambler. All right. We are back on the college football experience, Boise state Broncos season preview. And I I'm, I'm super excited to talk about the Broncos. Uh, you know, you recap a season ago, we're going to talk the portal in a second, but if you recap a season ago, Andy Avalos, uh, you know, he, the seat was hot and it's still hot. I would say coming into this year, cause they've built this, you know, this culture where they expect nine, 10 wins, like a nine win season is almost like a bad thing in Boise. Uh, he's 17 and nine in two seasons. Look last year, things weren't going well to start the season. They lose to, to Oregon state in Corvallis who turned out to be a, a 11 win team or something or 10 win team. Uh, but the very next week, you know, they, they played at new Mexico and they won that thing, but that was an ugly win. I remember watching it in Vegas and then, uh, they beat UT Martin in week three, and then they lost to a bad UTEP team. Well, five and seven UTEP team in, in the sun bowl in El Paso. And you could just tell, then they, they came back 
to Boise beat San Diego state, but they beat San Diego state by blocking two punts <laughs> for touchdowns. And, uh, and you, they fired their offensive coordinator, Tim plow. They were running air raid stuff. And uh, you know, plow was had success at UC Davis. He came in, but it just wasn't working out. Hank Bachmeyer opted to transfer out. He quit the team in the middle of the year. Now he's at La Tech. We're going to talk about the portal in a second, but then uh, Dirk Cutter, former Boise State head coach, uh, he happened to be on the staff in the interim OC role, and they went to this freshman Taylor Green, this freshman quarterback Taylor Green, and all of a sudden they caught lightning in a bottle because they did. They only lost one more game in the regular season, and that was uh, to BYU by three. As they they end up in the Mountain West Championship. Now they did lose to Fresno, who they had beat previously, but Fresno didn't have Jake Hayner in that game. They lost to Fresno in the Mountain West Championship game by twelve. Still won the bowl game though against North Texas, and out of all of that, they walk away with a ten win season. I mean, they, they, unbelievable! It's like I, I remember watching them, and I was like, "Man, Boise's lost their edge." Right? I remember watching like that UTEP game, and I was like, "This is not Boise." But they still had a ten win season. So you're, if you're telling me this is a terrible year and he's on the hot seat after a ten win season, what a time to be a Boise State fan! Uh, what'd you make of last year, Mike? Yeah, I mean, you you pretty much covered everything that I thought about it. I mean, I remember I put some money down on on Boise to cover against UTEP, and they lost outright. I was shocked, and uh, I was one of the people like, you got to get. Avalos out of here because he has no idea what Boise State football is all about. But somebody smacked somebody across the face and said, get this OC <laughs> out of here. That's the beauty of college football. That's why I love this sport is because there's programs that decades upon decades upon decades, you see the same style of team coming in and they just play the same style of football and they win because they play that way. Boise has the edge. They play tough defense. They got the gritty home field on the blue turf. They'll go into your stadium. They'll smack you in the mouth. They can run the football always. That's Boise State football. Air raid, when I knew that they were going to the air raid, I already thought in my head, oh, this is toast. This is terrible. Why are they yeah. doing this? So, yeah. you know, they fire them. They go back to their style of football. They run the ball. They play good defense. Andy Avalos, good defensive coordinator, good defensive mind. Um, they're in the right spot. They figured it out last year. They're in the right spot. I like the direction they're going. I do too. I really do. I thought, you know, what a great job. It takes balls to do that mid season. You know what I mean? Like it takes balls to do that. So kudos to Andy Avalos and hopefully he can continue to improve. Now the portal in 2023, always bad shit crazy. So we got to hit on that before we dive into the offense and the defense and the projections of what we're seeing. But like I said, hopefully you're watching this on YouTube. And remember we're previewing all 133 FBS college football teams with a solo podcast for every single team in the land. We do it each and every year folks Uh, departing in the portal defense alignment, Jackson Cravens. That's a big loss. He goes to BYU uh, and BYU (laughs) arrival somewhat of, uh, of boys of Boise States, at least, you know, over the past 20 years, I would say, um, they took not only him, they also took defensive lineman Isaiah Bagna and kicker Will Farron. I mean, how are you going to go to the rival? I, I, I get it. You guys probably aren't going to play each other anymore because BYU is no longer independent. They're in the Big 12. And like I alluded to earlier in this episode, all these Power Five schools say, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not put Boise State on the schedule, especially when we play another Power Five. That's That's just crazy over here. But man, that those were some big losses on the defensive line. The kicker, eh, I don't know. But uh the the defensive line, those are two guys that I that were gonna get some burn. Bachmeyer, as I alluded to, is now at Louisiana Tech. Look, they got Taylor Green. No problem. They also lost the backup, Sam Vidlack, who was previously at Oregon State, who came into Boise. He's now starting for the Montana Grizzlies, I think, in the FCS. Uh, so uh watch out for the Grizz in the FCS. That's a good get for them. They also lost offensive lineman Dallas Holiday to the Portland State Vikings. Defensive end Devin Wright to Texas State, and this was a big one here in uh, Tyno Hopper uh, to Michigan State. Um, but all with that said, I feel like that's not losing a substantial amount. When you do some of these teams, you know, some of these teams you're reading names for like six minutes. It's like picking up a telephone book back in the day and just rattling through. You know what I mean? So, uh, incoming. They bring in safety Titus Toller from the Wisconsin Badgers, where Jim Leonard and that 
uh, program was super good defensively. So that's always good. You know, he's probably going to be a high IQ defensive player based in that system. Wide receiver Chase Penry from Colorado. Look, I, I like the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, Penry was a solid guy, solid possession receiver. I could see him working out in Boise. Defensive end Tyler we- uh, Wegus from Utah, the Utah Utes. And I do expect Wegus to get solid burn. He might even start. Uh, so that's a nice get there. Uh, offensive tackle Ethan Carde from Texas Tech. Uh, I do expect him to be, uh, I think you'll be seeing him starting. Um, defensive tackle. Sheldon Newton from Northern Arizona. And this is one we should really talk about because Sheldon Newton. Yeah, there we go. She- yeah. Sheldon Newton. This is a guy that, that came from, look, people don't realize how good the big sky is. You see Sheldon Newton, you see Northern Arizona, you say, huh? Northern Arizona was not a bad team. I watch them a lot here in the, in the studio and the big sky has Montana, Montana state, Weber state, Sacramento state, UC Davis. Those are big time programs. So n- week in, week out, Playing that, uh, playing that competition, I'm telling you, a lot of those teams could join the Mountain West tomorrow, and be fine. They'll be making bowls. They might even contend if you're Montana State or Montana. Um, so Sheldon, Sheldon Newton, a big get on the defensive line, especially considering they lost uh, Cravens and Bagna to BYU, as well as Wright to Texas State. They also brought in. Uh, uh, K- Kevon Wright, or Kevon Wright, I guess it is, uh, from Boston College. I I can't read these names, but uh, yeah, from Boston College, that will be an interesting interesting one to see if he can give them some added depth to the defensive line. Also, Howard Brown from Iowa State and Matt Campbell, and then on the offensive line, they added more guys: Nikolai Bujanowski from Virginia Tech and offensive lineman Tyler Keneath from Western Illinois in the FCS with the leather leathernecks. What I find interesting is you have one safety and one wide receiver and the rest are all offense and defensive linemen. The other, the other eight guys coming in. So Avalos just loading up on the line of scrimmage. Uh, I mean, I think they won the transfer portal, but I don't know. I mean, I feel like if, if we see, you know, injuries at the quarterback spot, then you're going to say, Hey, they let Bachmeyer and Vidlak go. Well, I mean, they, they did leave, but they weren't active in bringing in guys. Maybe that is the one concern I would say is depth at the quarterback spot. But uh, as far as uh, other positions, I kind of love what they did on the line of scrimmage offensively and defensively. Uh, And then I think Penry's a a wide receiver that could work out for them. I don't expect him to start this year. And then Toller is a safety that I trust the IQ and the, the program at Wisconsin. How about yourself? You think they won the portal or is it kind of a wash? No, I think they won it. I think this is an interesting team. It's a team you really know the identity of. And I think the fact that they were number 83 in the country, only number four in the Mountain West, which is kind of surprising for Boise State being atop that conference, uh, that's their attitude towards the portal. Like, we got our guys. We know our attitude. If you don't want to be here, go. Now, they addressed some things. They brought in some Power 5 transfers, like you said, mostly on the line. Um, Also, the Shelton Newton, that's the guy that I highlighted. I said, this is the guy we got to talk about because I feel like they lost a lot of pass rush. They lost a lot on the defensive line. This guy is going to come up. He's going to make a statement. He's going to have a chip on his shoulder, which is what Boise State football is all about. So uh, offensively, you lost nothing that is going to hurt you at all. They bring back a lot on offense. Defense, that's what we're better at anyway. We got Andy Avalos. He's a good defensive mind. So yeah, uh, you could go either way. Maybe the portal's a wash. Maybe it's a slight win, but I don't think Boise state sweats the portal. Like other teams do. I think they're just, Hey, we're Boise state. We're going to bring in the right guys and we're going to win. So yeah, I agree. And they say, Hey, I, we trust our backups a part of this culture. And they've been part of this culture that hasn't had a losing season in 26 years. So, um, all right, well, look a year ago, we alluded to this, uh, Tim plow was the OC. Uh, well that's uh dirt cutter didn't want to come back. He was like, look, I enjoyed doing this, but I, I'm like 70. I'm, let me just retire with a margarita. And, and you know, I, I love boys who stay football, but hang on, hang on here. So they went out and hired Bush Hamden. Yes. Here's what you're, here's what you're talking about, man. And this is what I, I love about this program. First off Bush Hamden. I know you're thinking what well, interesting name. Yes. He was born in Kuwait, but this is a guy that played quarterback for Boise state from 04 to 08 keeping it in the house, keeping it in the family. And most recently he was, uh, 
He was the quarterbacks coach and wide receiver co- wide receiver coach for the Missouri Tigers in the SEC. Prior to that, he was with Chris Peterson at the with the Washington Huskies. So, I like this going back to a familiar face. He's got some time in the NFL with the Atlanta Falcons as well. He's been, you know, you, you can go on and on. He was at Colorado, Maryland, Florida, uh, you know, some big time programs over the years. I like this going back to a guy that was there in the heyday, worked with Chris Peterson, worked with Kellen Moore with, I think backed up Kellen Moore in those days. I, I like them. I feel like they're going back to their identity then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, same thoughts here, man. Uh, you bring in a guy that knows the attitude more than anything, not just the system, not just any of that. It's the attitude of Boise state football. He gets it. He knows it. Everybody calm down. Kellen Moore. He'll be here one day. He'll be the coach of this team. I'm sure he will. Right now, Bush Hamden, that's the guy. He has the attitude. I I love the hire. I think it's great for the transition that they're going back to hard-nosed Boise State football. Yeah, and let me tell you, the ground game this year has me super excited. But last year, they were 57th in the nation in scoring offense, 29th in rush offense. Remember, they ditched the air raid after four weeks, right? So those numbers would have been completely different <laughs> had they continued the air raid 29th in rush offense, 110th in pass offense, 68th in total offense. What I love about last year, the fact that they won 10 games and in, in my opinion, they kind of, they kind of went with a youth movement. This tail and green kid, they found mountain West freshman of the year. I'm already seeing comparisons to him uh, with jo- as Josh Allen, uh, uh, you know, that's what they're saying. He's, how did, how did uh, I, I listened to a podcast talking about how did Texas and Texas A&M and Texas Tech and Baylor and TCU whiff on this kid? And he comes out of the, the state of Texas. And this guy, I mean, I think he threw for over 300 yards in a game. He had, I think, four games over 100 yards rushing on the ground. He was a freshman. And let me tell you, if you watch Boise State film from a year ago, he pops off screen doing the option read with him. Watch out, world! Watch out, Mountain West, and and watch out, Washington and uh, and UCF, who have them on the schedule. But not only him, they also have this freshman running back last year, Ashton Genty. I know NC Nick hit me up. I feel like after the second game or third game, I was like, dude, you seen this kid Genty for Boise State? And 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 at the time, Green hadn't even got in the game yet. They were still doing air raid. He's like, this guy Genty is a beast. He's a freshman. So they went with the youth movement. Those two guys, and then you add in George Halani, who I feel like's been a, a really good running back for Boise State for like ten years. The ground game is going to be awesome, I think. I think you you key into more of that option read stuff that they were doing a lot with Taylor Green, and he's going to develop more as a passer. I think they're in great hands right now. And then you add in the fact that they bring back oh their entire receiving core: Latrell Cables, uh, Billy Bowen, uh, Stephon Cobbs, and tight end Riley Smith, all back all of them back and also keep an eye out for uh, Prince Strahan, a freshman wide receiver. I know they've been raving about uh, also three of five back on the offensive line led by right tackle Mason Rudolph. Um, I mean, I think this offense is going to be a lot better than 68th in the offense, you know, uh, providing everyone stays healthy. I think this, this offense is going to be a lot better in uh, 2023 than 2022. How about yourself, Mike? No lockstep. Um, Ashton Genty, it kind of reminds me of when you would see uh, R.J. Harvey came into coming in a game for UCF, and the, like they got these two good backs, and then you see Harvey coming, and you're like, oh, no, 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 wait, this dude pops, yeah, yeah. Helani, yeah. You, you got everything with Helani. Like I, I literally wrote in my notes, been around for two decades because he has, been. <laughs> he's been there forever. I mean, he, he didn't even was he Oregon originally? I think I, I think he transferred in. Yeah, uh, I, I, from I think he was on the. I think he was on the team that beat Florida State too. I want to say he had a big day in the ground that day. I could be wrong, but I believe I so. that team. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, just just a really good offense. I feel like, and what a great scenario for Bush Hamden to walk into. I think <laughs> uh, now the defensive side of the ball, Andy Avalos and and defense corner Spencer Spencer Danielson. They lost a lot, but man, they were fire last year. You look at the, they were 15th in scoring defense, 30th in rush defense, fifth in pass defense, all together, the six best defense in America. Um, and they, they, they do bring back six year senior. This is the, this is the guy who's probably older than 26 DJ Schramm at linebacker. Uh, he's going to be the heartbeat of this defense, and but he's the only linebacker back on Boise state. Now they do bring back two of four on the defensive line and Herbert gums and, and Dimitri Washington. And like we alluded to Sheldon Newton uh, and I, 
you know, keep an eye out on him. The NAU transfer secondary, just two of four back in the secondary. You can make a case one of four led by safety, Rodney Robertson. I know they have, uh, uh, Kanohi, uh, Kanaho, uh, who is a cornerback that may start for them. He, you'll see him, I think in, in, in nickel and dime packages, but, um, the defense is kind of the question mark heading into this season. And I think as a Boise state fan, you got to like that because you know, Avalos's skill is the defensive side of the ball. So, uh, wh- what do you, what do you make of, uh, of that scenario there with their defense? So that's the number one thing is you take into account your coaching staff. Who's your DC? Who's your head coach? Defensive minded Andy Avalos. I'm fine with it. He's going to be fine. What's the other thing I want to see? Okay. You have a lot of turnover on defense. Well, what's the new pieces look like? You look down at, you see junior, junior, senior, senior, junior, 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 like one sophomore in the bunch. I want to see upperclassmen because they're more mature. They know the game. They've been around it this whole time. Some of them have been in the system, even though they're not starting. They've been in the system or the ones coming in from power five schools, Sheldon Newton. Again, we think he's going to be huge. So I like seeing the experience. I like seeing the juniors and seniors. That makes me not worry about the turnover on defense so much. I think it's a perfect setup. Yeah. They have eight super seniors by my count. Eight. That, that means you get, I mean, like I said, this day and age, day and age, day and age of college football is like, you know, you got the COVID eligibility, you got the, <laughs> Red shirt, just natural red shirt. Then you get the 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 transfer. The, you know you can stay in college for seventy five years these days. Uh, so take advantage, folks. Uh, everyone's Van Wilder. Um, look, uh, <laughs> it's like seeing so, a Senate meeting out there instead of a football team. It's just a bunch of old dudes. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, though. <laughs> that's why I'm nervous about my statement. My first thing, I was ready to fire that stat off. Being there's no one on this roster. That that was alive when they had a losing season, and I go, I don't know. Today's college, t- today's day and age of college football. Um, some of them, some of them saw the Reagan administration, dude. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, so look, before we get to going game by game on the on the the Broncos schedule, uh, I want to tell you that we're brought to you by Bird Dogs. Yes, Bird Dogs. Uh, they make you look good. All right, Bird Dogs are stretch khaki shorts, and they're d- designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. That's a great way. Look, maybe you're, maybe you're out there, you're single, you're trying to, to get some girls to notice you, right? Telling you bird dogs. All right. They got the stretch shorts. They're going to make you look like friggin' uh, Swayze and roadhouse. All right. Uh, so look, bird dogs, uh, shorts do, do the exact same thing. Uh, but they, as, as other stuff, but they just, they fit way better. They fit way better. Okay. They just, they, they figured this thing out. Bird dogs fixed the issue by inventing a uh, cloud knit fabric that looks just like khakis, but stretches. So you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement and bird dog uses anti anti stink sweat, uh, wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day. So you're not smelling like friggin' Christian Slater coming out of the bar here. You know what I mean? So look, they got you covered. Um, so I feel like, you know, bird dogs, but you gotta love that. I mean, we're truly in like this is like some shit you would see in like Back to the Future too, where they have they have like this thing that's gonna make you smell good too. So you're gonna look fine, and then you you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Oh, you know, yeah, you never made it home last night. Not a problem. Bird Dog's got you covered. Uh, go to birddog.com/pool and enter the promo code pool for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. I mean, look at this. They're giving you gifts. Uh, that's birddog.com/pool for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your uh, your bird dogs off. We promise you that, baby. All right, all right. We are back on the college football experience, and if you're watching on YouTube, which you should be subscribed to, but also wherever podcasts are found, Spotify, iTunes, wherever, subscribe. Please give us a five star review if you can. All right, even if you say I'm an idiot, just give us the five stars. You can say I'm an idiot after that. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, though, you see our sweet graphics. Shout out to our graphics guy, Cameron Kerr. Uh, you'll see a photo of tail and green uh, and you see the win total that Las Vegas expects for the Boise state Broncos heading into 2023. It's at eight and a half. All right. So if you're not watching, it's at eight and a half. And uh, you know, I alluded to this pre episode. That's like a down year for Boise. If they only go eight and four, <laughs> like he's going to be extremely on the hot seat the following year. If he goes eight and four. So my first reaction without diving into the schedule, Mike is hammer that over, right? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I saw it at over under nine, and I saw the over at plus 140, and I laughed. So eight and a half. <laughs> I'm gonna get back on. I'm gonna shop around. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up bird dog khakis because I'm interested in that now. <laughs> and I'm gonna just find better lines because I want this eight and a half, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eight and a half. Get on over there. Look, I do see I did see some nines out there, but the book we're using is eight and a half. But uh either way, even if it's nine, let's dive into this thing. Saturday, September 2nd. This game's awesome. This game you could make an argument. I know Dion's taking on TCU, and I know. You got the Carolina battle, South Carolina versus North Carolina, but that's, that's at an NFL stadium. You know, that drives me crazy. Um, this is one of the best games on, on opening week one college football Saturday, Boise state heads to Husky stadium. Well, where people will be sailgating uh, to take on the Washington Huskies who are preseason top 10 in many publications, um, man. This is this is so like this is so tough because I I have Washington winning this game. I think Kayla DeBauer is a fantastic coach, but I do think beware what you wish for because like that we've seen this for thirty years now almost. Uh, you know, like this is the one. I, I expect this to be a very close game, but I think the youth of Taylor Green. I think uh, if I had to guess, Washington's going to force him to throw the ball. It is a tough road environment that I don't know. Remember, Taylor Green started after week four. Uh, I don't know that he has seen a road environment like this. And I think he's going to struggle some with throwing the ball in this particular game. So I have the Washington Huskies winning this one. How about yourself? Yeah, I mean, if, if you're not excited to watch this game week one, you you don't know what Boise State football is all about. I mean, we've seen them go in and do this to these, okay, you've got a Pac-12 top 10 ranked team that's not named USC in their heyday and everything. So this is the perfect type of team for Boise State to go in, smack in the mouth, and show them right off the bat, hey, we're Boise and we do this all the time. Uh, however, I got to go with Washington just for the sake of predicting an over-under. I mean, you want to, you know, kind of toe that line as much as you can and be like, okay, what are the losses? So I'm looking at this one as a loss, but there's no way you don't watch this game. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, and the very next week is going to be fantastic because – the UCF Golden Knights. Now, Boise, uh, I think it was two years ago, went into Orlando and was up, I want to say, 21 to three and lost. Uh, Bachmeyer threw it. Uh, this was like a painful game for Boise, Boise State fans because I really feel like Boise was the better team this game. UCF came storming back. Bachmeyer with a critical interception running out of bounds, uh, like under two minutes as they were pretty much like five, 10 yards away from field goal range where they would have won the game. Perhaps now UCF, like I alluded to has to go, uh, you know, this is the return of back when they were in, in the AAC. So they have to go to the Smurf turf. And this is one, as much as I think Gus Malzahn and UCF might be solid in the big 12 this year. This is it's on the Smurf turf, dude. I just rattled off that record. You, you, you gotta be insane to be confident to, uh, on on the fact that a P five is just going to walk into the Smurf turf and win, I got Boise beating UCF. How about yourself? If you love college football and you love gambling, you know what I'm talking about. When there's sometimes when you take a team and they cover or they win for you, and you're kind of pissed off that you just won that game, that UCF Boise State game in the bounce house was like exactly <laughs> one of those. I I bet UCF and I was pissed they won um, yeah. because of that. <laughs> <laughs> the end of that game and, and just the way the whole second half went. But uh, no, I give them no chance. I think they might lose by over double digits in this game. Honestly, I, I think they're going to, they're going to prove a point in this game. And I don't trust Gus traveling cross country in this kind of environment. There's no way. Yeah. And, and another thing is UCF opens up with Kent state, Kent state, like their whole team left. They're like Colorado yeah. of the Mac. And so I think UCF is going to blow out Kent state but I think it's almost a, a bad way to start out your season in a way, because they're like, I think Kent state's like mid tier FCS this year. And, and to me to go from that to the Smurf turf is a drastic difference. You almost want to get a little more test or, or tested the, uh, the first week of the season. So yeah, I got them one and one now. And then interesting FCS watch out by the way, uh, uh, North Dakota, the fighting Hawks. I know everyone knows North Dakota state, but I had just talked about, Big Sky football. If there's one conference that would be better than the Big Sky, perhaps it would be the Missouri Valley and North Dakota. The Fighting Hawks reside in that conference. And look, I mean, 
This is a team that was seven and five a year ago, and they they opened up the season at Nebraska. Actually, had that game close for a, a long time, and then Nebraska cranked it up. Uh, you know, back on Saturday, September third. But they're not a terrible team. They have Tommy Schuster at quarterback. They made the FCS uh, playoffs, lost to Weber State by seven a year ago. So watch out. But once again, that's a Smurf turf. Boise wins. But I, I shout out to the scheduling. The out of conference schedule this year for Boise State is pretty insane. Because North this North Dakota, I do think if you drop them in the Mountain West, probably gonna end up in a bowl. They're not a bad team. So uh what what you got them winning this one against the Fighting Hawks? I do, man. Uh yeah, just on that note, that this was like the most interesting part of that game was just to look into North Dakota, which I kind of already knew, but uh, like they played five ranked teams last year plus Nebraska from the FBS. Like that team made the playoffs and played a hell of a schedule. So this is a really good team, but uh, Boise, it's just, that's not the one you go mess with. They're not going to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then on Friday night, this is awesome. I should go to this game at the snapper in San Diego, uh, the brand new San Diego state stadium, uh, Boise state heads down to Snapdragon stadium, you know? So I forever, I feel like San Diego state under Rocky long, this was like a terrible, tough game for Boise. Now, Brady Hoke, we've made fun of him here. Uh, off, off, uh, off, off air essentially. Cause he had like a, uh, I watched a show like the insider, you know, like, uh, inside a- Aztec football. And he's like, we don't want to be Rocky long's physical team. We want to air it out. some. we want to do this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Don't say that with the microphone on you fool. Right. So I in, low key behind the scenes, even though we love San Diego state and want them to be in the uh, power five, just like we want Boise in the power five. I don't know what he's thinking. Like Rocky long had a great formula and it was working at Boise or I'm sorry, at San Diego state. So I, I can tell you this Boise tried to go finesse. Look what happened. They fired their OC. They returned to their power roots. And uh, so I got Boise going into the snapper and getting a dub on Friday, September 22nd. How about yourself? No, same exact train of thought. And, and same thing with me. I, I was disappointed to see the direction that San Diego state's going uh, uh, last year, I was higher than a lot of like preseason things were showing on San Diego state. I felt a little bold about it. And then as the season went on, I'm like, Oh, Oh wow. I messed up. And this year I'm seeing San Diego state getting a little bit of clout for mid-level uh, competition, you know, mid-major, but I don't see it. I don't, I don't think they're going to be that much better than last year. And I, I don't think this is really a close game. I give it to Boise. Yeah. Yeah. I think Boise is the better team right now. So now, but this is a tricky spot because from Boise to San Diego, I don't know, a couple hour flight. And then the very next week. So you have back to back away games. You got to go to the Liberty bowl where as much as I have given Ryan Silverfield a hard time, the uh, head coach of the Memphis tigers. All right. You go back and look at that schedule from a year ago. You say, Oh, well they were seven and six, but man, other than the Mississippi state season opener, every other game they lost, they lost to Houston by one. They lost to ECU in four overtimes by two. They lost to Tulane at Tulane by 10 UCF just by seven and SMU by three. At some point that's bad luck. Uh, I get it. Like you got to start winning some of these close games, but a lot of times if you find the, the, the team, the year prior to know Phil, our friend still Phil Steele has this stat. That's, that's a bad luck that you lost all your one score games essentially. Did they win one, one score game? I don't think they did. And, and to me, that means they're probably better than their final record. So I think this is a sneaky, tough game. You know what? I'll say this. I think they're going to win this. I think they're going to win this, but if they did lose a, another game, I do think it'd be on this back-to-back stretch, but I think they're better than Memphis right now. So I think, I think they beat Memphis at, at the Liberty bowl on Saturday, September 30th. How about yourself? (laughs) <laughs> um, I, I honestly, I went back and forth on this game. I, I gave them a loss, uh, just to be cautious. I'm not impressed with uh silver field or silver fish yeah. or silver, yeah. whatever <laughs> F <laughs> word you want to throw on yeah. the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, the Liberty bowl is super tough and it's the second leg of a back-to-back road trip, but you're not facing that tough physical San Diego state team the week before. Um, so I like, I I like them to go in and get it done. I gave them a loss second leg of a back-to-back to to be cautious. Also, I think Memphis has a slight chance. They play Missouri the week before, and I think Memphis might actually upset Missouri. So I like it. 
<laughs> that's even uh, more reason for Boise to get the win. But I'm gonna go with the loss just to be cautious. I could see it. It's a back to back away. Obviously, the, those the, there's ridiculous numbers out there on back to back away games. Uh, they come home to take on San Jose State. I actually think this game could be a little more trickier than we realize because it's Chevin Cordiero's back. Brent Brennan's second year with with Cordiero. I got Boise winning this because once again the Smurf turf, the Smurf turf. But I do think this one could end up being a, a more difficult game than San Diego State. Um, but yes, give me uh, Boise to get it done at uh, Bronco Stadium, which they now call Albertson Stadium for some 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 stupid reason. Probably a bunch of millions of dollars. But um, what are you doing here on October seventh? So same thought process as you. I think this is going to be a really tough game. Uh, I gave them the win here, but I think it's basically you're going to give them a loss, either Memphis or San Jose State. San Jose State does have the bye the week before, but I just couldn't in good conscience let San Jose State go into, uh, like you said, Albertson Stadium and get the win. So I, I, I went with the win here for San Diego State, but I think they're going to lose one of those two. Wait, you went for a win for Boise State or, or for San Boise State. over San yeah. Jose State? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, then they are at Colorado State, Jay Norvell year two. I do expect Colorado State to be a lot better this year. Now, I still think this is a win for Boise State because I think it's going to take Norvell probably next year's when you'll see him try to turn the corner. But I do think Colorado State will be a lot more competitive uh, this year. But give me Boise to win on Saturday, October 14th against CSU. How about yourself? Yeah, this is homecoming for Colorado State. Interesting, but. Here's the thing is I thought Colorado State, I thought they were going to be in a little bit better of a spot last year with all the transfers that came in, all the talent, and they are really, really far off. So, yeah, win for Boise for me. Then they get a bye week heading into, and look, I, I prefer them end their season with playing this game as opposed to, or honestly, I get it. The Air Force rivalry has been good too, and that's who they end the season with. But Wyoming and Boise, just Idaho and Wyoming, it just it's something about it. But Here's the thing that's interesting. Craig Bowles teams, it, they play Boise good, but damn, if they're not one in 14 all time against Boise state, I mean, dude, it, this is almost like hard to believe. Cause you look back last year, Boise wins by three year before in Boise, Boise wins by 10 year before Boise wins by eight year before that uh, Wyoming misses a kick in regulation to win Boise wins it in overtime. Uh, whatever, for whatever reason, none of these games go past 10 points that like 10 points is like a blowout in these games. Uh, I'm taking Boise cause it's on the Smurf turf, but I do kind of like Wyoming and, and Craig bulls culture that he has. I think it'll be a tough physical game. Give me something like 21, 21, 17 Boise wins. What are you doing here? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what, looking into this conference, it's it's one of my favorite conferences. And this year I was a little disappointed at what I was seeing. I was kind of thinking, eh, I don't know if it's a great Mountain West year. Wyoming, however, is towards the top of the pack for what I think is going to happen in this conference. If this game was in Laramie, I'm giving this game to Wyoming. But uh, being on the Smurf turf, yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go with Boise, especially getting the bye to prepare for, for uh, Craig Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. And then comes the big one. Uh, I'm sure Boise state fans will tell you that, you know, what, how did, how did they split? How did they lose the mountain West championship game to Jeff Tedford and Fresno state the second time in like the past five years they've lost in Boise. So two of those seven losses to Fresno state. Now they got to go to the Valley. That is concerning. Uh, This is one where I, I, I trust you. I think Jeff Tedford's one of the most underrated coaches in America. Um, so, um, I, I took Fresno to win this one. I know they lose Jake Hayner. I know they lose Kelly to, to, uh, their star wide out to wazoo, but I thought they did a great job in the portal going out and getting some talent. Um, they went out and got, uh, the QB. Well, I, I don't know if he's going to start because, because, uh, the backups that they had, but, uh, they went out and got the UCF kid. That that didn't fit in uh in the system that Gus Malzahn. Well, why am I drawing a blank on his name right now? Mike Mike Keen. Keen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Jeff Tedford's going to make him very good and probably an NFL quarterback, it, it, just like Hayner is now. But I still think Fresno's too tough. They 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 have guys that you know at the skill positions that I think can present challenges to Boise State. So I have Fresno winning 
on the uh, or not on the Smurf turf. They have them. I have them winning in the Valley. What are you What are you doing here? Yeah, same thought process. If this game was earlier in the season, I would definitely be going with Boise State, even on the road. Um, but being that it is later and it is at Fresno, I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say Tedford is going to have this thing swinging in full full motion by then. So. Uh, he's just too good of, good of a coach not to trust. I, I'm going to go ahead and take him, especially following a super physical game against Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, that's a good point after the Wyoming game, then they get New Mexico. Uh, Danny Gonzalez, shout out to Danny Gonzalez, former New Mexico Lobo, but it's, it's been a tough year. He's on the hot seat in Albuquerque. And I think New Mexico, knowing that Bronco Mendenhall is out there who used to coach at New Mexico. Uh, watch out because I think he might be the next head coach in New Mexico. I, I think uh, the fact that New Mexico has got to come to Albertson stadium, that's a loss. Uh, this is a blowout loss. It's probably like 35, uh, seven. What are you doing here in Albertson stadium? Yeah. I thought last year was the year. Maybe New Mexico was going to be like slightly better. See some improvement, especially like COVID really, really, really hampered the New Mexico team. So I thought we were going to see a little bit better play. We didn't. I don't think Danny Gonzalez is the guy. Yeah, I'm going Boise blowout. That now comes the interesting one for me because uh they head to Maverick Stadium to take on Utah State. Uh Boise has got a great history of fucking up Utah State. And but Utah State won the Mountain West two years ago. Um, and Blake Anderson, I thought last year, you know, they had a tough time, but Blake Anderson, his per like his actual personal life was, was, has been really crazy. His wife passed away from cancer a couple of years ago when he was in the process of, of leaving to go to, uh, to, to Utah state, I think that year. And then I believe his son, uh, took his own life this past year. So I don't even, I look back at last year's Utah state season and I know they were injured. They got extremely injured, but I was just like, man, I don't even know that your mo- your head is there a hundred percent. Maybe having the off season now, there'll be a tougher team but Boise hasn't lost to Utah state since 2015. Now, granted that game was in Logan. So a little tricky, but I think Boise is just a way more physical team. I got Boise going into Logan and winning, but I definitely want to send our, uh, our, our best wishes, thoughts, prayers uh, to, uh, to Blake Anderson and his family. But um, I think Boise, Boise comes out of this. You. I do. Um, yeah. They've won seven straight. They're 22 and five all time. Logan pretty tricky place to play. Right. But I don't like the uh, little kind of powder puff offense going up against a very physical defense. I think this is a really good matchup in favor for Boise state. The only thing that kind of catches my eye is that air force game, just sitting right on deck. So careful on this one, but I do like Boise. And there we go. We end the season uh, black Friday with air force going to Albertson stadium. Now in, in years past people, I don't think people realize that Troy Calhoun kind of fucks with Boise, but I wonder how much the rule changes will affect air force this year. Um, they can't, they're going to be running a lot of the gun. I, I just did the air force preview. They're going to be running a lot of the gun. And I think that's concerning. You look at last season, Boise state beat air force 1914, by the way, they had to sweat that thing out. The, the last time they played in Boise air force won 24, 17, and Troy Calhoun has won in Boise a few times. Once again, they only have seven losses since 1999 in Boise. Troy Calhoun, I think, is responsible for two of them. So tread lightly. These games are always close because of the, the clock and the way Calhoun uses the clock to his advantage. It's on the Smurf turf. I'm trusting the statistics. Give me a 17-14 final. Boise gets it done. What are you doing here? Without a doubt, man, I, I'm sure you and I could do a whole podcast on uh, what the NIL and, and, and what the, the adaptation of today's game is doing to these these service academies. I believe Army is going to more of a more open shotgun style offense as well. So it's tough to watch this happen to the service academies. It's tough to watch them try to keep up with the transfer portal and with the NIL stuff. It, it's really tough and, to and, do that. And just... <laughs> Just bullshit rules by the NCAA. They have no ground yeah. to do that. Uh, just absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, continue on. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but any, I, yeah, I'm going the same way as you. I'm going to win because it's at Albertson. 
Um, but I, I definitely expect a very close game. I like this Air Force team. I know they lost some talent, but they're bringing back all seniors, juniors. That's what you want to see out of a service academy. So it's going to be interesting to see the transition, but I still expect them to fight. Give me the Broncos in a win. Though. I agree. So that look, that puts me at 10 and two. That puts you at nine and three. And that would be mean both overs are going to hit. But man, I was even thinking about this when I was previewing this. If they were to somehow upset Washington, I don't see like a clear cut loss. I mean, yes, I had them losing at Fresno, but like that's like a, you know, those games, they get kind of wacky. You know what I mean? Like they beat Fresno. They went one and one against Fresno last year. Uh, this could be a ma- like the first two weeks. If they can get through the first two weeks, watch out because I, I think Boise could really be a team to watch out for. And especially, it's a shame that this year, is still the four team and not the 12 team because the top group of five would be able to get in. But I think you take the over, especially, you know, at eight and a half, I think you got to take the over. I don't even think of like a worst, ca- like worst case scenario actually is like if Taylor green gets injured, that, that, that would be the one thing where I, I, I think you wouldn't be able to hit your over because I don't think they have the quarterback depth, but, and maybe they bring in someone in August, but Aside from that, I think this is pretty much like a slam dunk to hit the over on eight and a half. How about yourself? No, definitely. And and if that happens, you just go back old school. You put a wide receiver back there that's fast, and you just run the hell out of the ball with your two stud running backs. I'm sure there's a third on the roster. I didn't even look at it. But um, as far as like that far on the depth chart for running back, but they're they're fine. Um, Yeah, I have them nine and three. I saw the over at uh, nine when I got it, and it was plus 140, like I said, and I already bet it. So eight and a half, you get that. Take it all day. That's that's damn near a lock for me. Yeah, yeah, folks, get on over there. Like like I said, I can't even, I can't even like, I don't even see a scenario where they like. Okay, maybe Memphis gets them because the back to back away. But Memphis was just a seven and six team a year ago. Uh, you know, I I just think Boise State has a better roster than Memphis right now. But it is at Memphis. Maybe they slip up there. I think you got to play the over. Folks, uh, look, before we get out of here, though, we have a special guest here that uh, Michael Barker, a.k.a. Uh, College Football Campus Tour. I'd sat down for a, uh, a nice little interview with him uh, regarding Boise State Bronco football and, and Bronco Stadium, a.k.a. Albertson Stadium. Uh, so with no further ado, here is Michael Barker. Joining us on the college football experience, Boise State Broncos 2023 season preview episode is, uh, t- to me, just an auto- an auto follow. If you love college football and you love traveling, you gotta you gotta follow this guy. Uh, you some know him as College Football Campus Tour. I'm lucky enough to know him as Michael Barker. Michael, uh, I've had the opportunity. Uh, first off, thanks for coming on the show, and I've had the opportunity to go to Albertson Stadium in Boise, Idaho, and. I love this place, but I'm curious your thoughts on your experiences to Boise. And uh, once again, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate joining you as always. And, you know, what what you want in college football, which different, differentiates it for uh, the No Fun League, is uniqueness. And we know Boise State is having the blue turf, and uh, it's really distinct. It brought notoriety. And uh, they even came up with a rule in 2011 in the NFL. They call it the Boise rule that put on paper that no NFL team is allowed to have colored turf. So it shows you the impact of a, a big sky school in 1986, making a decision to go with blue turf and see how it has uh, affected not only college football, but even on the NFL. But as far as the stadium, you know, it was originally called Bronco stadium. Now it's Albertson stadium started out with 14,000 seats. It's been upgraded and renovated several times to 36,000 seats. It used to have a track. They filled it in the track. Uh, and it also hosts the uh, annual Idaho Potato Bowl. And a, a stat that I found was Boise State since 1999 is 136 and 13 at home. <laughs> well, that's what makes college football so great. Is you got this school that wasn't a community; it was a community college not that long ago, like historically. And out of the blue, they start, uh, you know, just playing really good football. And they, they, you know, I feel like they're almost nationally known now. 
Uh, I was telling you this uh, pre-episode, but I, I've I've even heard people that don't even follow football refer to who is that school on the blue turf that's really good at football, and I think it's a testament to their program and obviously the idea to go with the blue turf because that you know obviously I think everyone knows that the blue turf is Boise, uh, but I mean what a what a run and and this is like I think one of the more fascinating stories. I would love to see a thirty for thirty on the history of Boise State football because they came up. They haven't had a losing season since the 1990s. A lot of people don't realize that. And you just touting that record is probably, I, I guess I'm, I'm shocked, but I'm not shocked because I know how dominant they've been. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, when I went to a game, I went to a uh, BYU game uh, and it was a goal line stand. I, I want to say actually BYU won the game, I believe. And what was cool was like right across the street from Bronco stadium, AKA Albertson stadium is like, they have like these bars that are like, it looks like you're walking into someone's house. So uh, I don't know if you had a chance to go to those, but uh, I I loved my experience in in Boise. And I'll echo what you said. Uh, One of the things that I can remember distinctly is I went to the game by myself and I'm sitting in my seat and I started to get all these eyeballs on me and people started to ask me, why, why are you here by yourself? And I told him, you know, it was back in 2018, kind of when, you know, a year or two into starting. And, and I told him about my travels. And from that point on, it was Boise State education. You know, they pointed, they, they uh, taught me the cheers that they had. They pointed out places that they have guys that dress up like Elvis in a certain section. And they really wanted to make sure they had a great time. So if you had a great time at the bars across the street, inside the stadium, it was, the, it was the same thing. And, you know, just kind of piggybacking on where you talked about the impact of Boise State football. You know, they won the, the famous Fiesta Bowl against Oklahoma State or Oklahoma with the Statue of Liberty play. But you could make an argument that they're responsible for the expansion of the playoff because of their success. You know, they started getting in these big games and not having a path to the playoff. And they knocked off some giants. You follow that by UCF in 2017, claiming a national championship. They were the first ones to knock on that door. Cincinnati made the playoff uh, in the last year or two. So it really is a process that made them expand the playoff to invite more teams. And you could argue it started with Boise State football. I think you're spot on, man. I, I, what I can just off the top of my head, obviously the Oklahoma win, but I, I went to a game where Boise beat uh, Virginia tech at FedEx. That was pretty much a home game for Virginia tech. I think they beat Georgia at the, uh, I don't know. I think it was at the, the Georgia dome then, uh, and Florida state in, in, in Tallahassee, they have earned it. And what a great place to catch a game folks. If you find yourself in Idaho, you got to get over to the blue turf in Boise and Albertson stadium. Even though I, man, I, I hate the, that, that name. I, I like Bronco stadium. We're just going to call it Bronco stadium. Uh, uh, Michael, I appreciate you hopping on and uh, I look forward to catching you at, at a, at a Bronco game or at a Boise state Bronco game at Bronco stadium, man. Absolutely. I, they play a lot of weeknight games. So hopefully we get one soon. There we go, brother. Thank you. There we go. Michael Barker, obviously, man. And, and Mike, we uh, have you, I, I don't know if you've been to Boise, but if not, you got to go, man. Dude, I, I would love to go. That right there shows the difference. I, I would love to go to Boise and the stories he was telling sounds awesome. Sounds right. Like what you'd expect. So the last stadium I went to that was out of the norm for my region, uh, I guess it's my region now. Cause I live in Florida now, but uh, I went to a game in Tallahassee at, at uh, Joe Campbell. And oh, it was, uh, I mean, there was more kids doing, doing like uh, ice bucket challenges and, and retweeting and just not paying attention to the game, not watching at all, not caring what's going on. Well, um, that, 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 they're, no, <laughs> they're notorious for the guy reading the novel, the guy yeah. reading the novel, the spy novel in the middle of the game when they're down 50 to Clemson. <laughs> but <laughs> so, so that's anyway, what you want. Yeah. You know, you want that college football experience. You don't, you don't want what you get down here in Florida when things aren't great. <laughs> there you go. But Hey, FSU is coming back anyway, get to Boise folks and get to the Smurf turf and check out a Boise state Bronco football game. Folks subscribe to the college football experience. We are previewing all 133 teams with the solo episode for each and every team in the land. All right. We're both on the over with the Broncos. Also make sure you uh, give us a follow on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Uh, and also remember subscribe on YouTube Give us a five-star review. We're on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to the podcast at. So please, if you can, 
do that. Also come talk college football with us in the discord sports gambling podcast.com slash discord, get the SGPN app and also make sure you give us a follow. Mike is on Twitter at GCG underscore wins. He also uh, works with live edge slabs, which I highly recommend if you're looking for a coffee table. I mean, this, this, this stuff is, uh, this is, this is not, I've, I've been that idiot that goes out to Ikea, gets a coffee table. And six months later, you're in the same spot. You know what I mean? <laughs> six months later, you're like, damn it. I spent a couple hundred at Ikea. You know, what was I thinking? Well, go get <laughs> a real coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just got into this industry. You know, I was kind of, you know, hey, I got some calluses on the hands, but you know, kind of like <laughs> a pretty boy. Most of my life, I wouldn't be caught sand and wood. Come on now. <laughs> but uh, I go there, I kind of get my feet wet. And like you go to Ikea and you see stuff compared to what they got going on. Live Edge Slabs, LLC.com. Also LLC, uh, Live Edge Slabs, LLC on Facebook and Insta. But you see what they got going on. It's it's not even comparable. Like, I, I you know, I like raise my nose at those places now because I'm like, no, <laughs> this ain't furniture. Come on, man. I'm an expert. But yeah, yeah. thanks. Thanks for the shout out. brother. Of course, <laughs> man. I, I went there. I was looking at the website and some of the shit. I was like, this is incredible. So <laughs> check out that stuff. Give Mike a follow on Twitter. Mike knows college football as good as any. And uh, give me a follow on Twitter at uh at the Colby D look, I know that sounds ridiculous putting the, but someone else had Colby D. So therefore I sound like a jackass and I say at the Colby D, but uh, yeah, looking forward to breaking down each and every school in the land folks subscribe to the college football experience. Let's go Boise state Buckham Bronco. Give me the over on this. This is the college football experience. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here. Not a one to get